Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. At this point, we've pretty much got content going out every 48 hours, so don't stay stuck with your business. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And also, if you want more help with the topic that we're going to be talking about today, reach out to me. There's a number of ways you can do that. Visit the description uh, below this video. There's a number of ways you can get in contact with me send me questions or even book a 10 to 15 minute call where we jump on zoom i can ask you a couple of questions with regards to where you're currently at what you want to do and i can show you some actionable steps to take this week to grow and scale your coaching business okay so today i want to talk about running a successful winter soccer camp this christmas so i'm recording this video on the 5th of december Right, is about 20 days left until Christmas Day. And what a lot of coaches are currently doing at the moment is they are planning and starting to design their soccer camps, right? So their winter soccer camps this Christmas. So I thought it would be a good idea because I, I had a conversation with a coach last week about running a Christmas camp. Okay, this coach has never run at a camp before. So I thought it'd be a good, good way to share with you if you're thinking of running your own winter camp this Christmas. I'm going to give you a very simple structure that you can follow. Right now, as I say to all coaches, this is just a template. You can adjust the template to how you want, run away with it. You can copy it, right? But what I'm about to share with you, some coaches do pay me to help them, right? So there's a lot of value in this video. So make sure that you take the time to watch the video from start to finish and take notes, right? Take notes because it will help you in the future, right? If you decide to not only just run winter camps, but if you want to run summer camps, if you want to run other camps during the year, right, this very simple breakdown will, will help you. Okay, so if you look at my screen, I'm going to pretty much break down all the points that I've got in front of me, right? So the first bit is a checklist, right? So when I work with coaches and I help them run uh, their camps, there's a number of checklists that we have to go through in order to make sure that the, the, the camp is going to be successful, right? So the first one is an online registration page, and this is where parents can log on, right, and register onto your camp. Now, the reason why you want this is because the whole purpose of these camps is to then later sell those clients or those customers onto other products and programs that you offer within your sports training business. So once they register online, you're able to keep that data, right? And then reach out to them. Maybe after the camp is, is finished, the day after or two days after, and just ask for feedback how the camp went, right? Did, the, did they enjoy the camp? Was it did, did did you find it was a success? What can be improved? How can we do better next year? What would you like to see included in upcoming camps, right? So the more feedback and data you can get, the more successful your camps can then run in the future, right? The second one is facility or location, right? So making sure that you have a set facility, whether it, it be an indoor, if you're in a part of the country which is really cold, rainy, uh, snowy, and you're running these camps indoors, making sure that you've got that indoor facility to be able to run the camp uh, successfully throughout the week, right? Now, if you're looking to, to run it out of a local park, then that's completely fine as well. Just make sure that you have permission from your local your local council or your local government or whoever owns or runs that that park 
right? It could be a rec department, right? Whoever owns and runs those the your local parks, make sure you have permission from them to be able to run your your camp, right? And if you have to get a permit, make sure you get that permit so that you don't go throughout the day having to worry about if someone's going to come and kick you off the field. Okay, now next one, day and time, right? So set day, set time, goes without saying, make sure you have a set day, set time for the camp. So knowing what days you're gonna be running the camp, knowing what times you're gonna be running the camp, this helps you with your planning, your preparation, but also obviously your, your customers need to know what day and time they're going to be dropping and picking up their, their child from the camp. Uh, insurance. Right, making sure that you are insured and that you have liability insurance. Okay, now this is for any UK coach watching, make sure that you're insured and any US coach watching, because I know predominantly we, we have a lot of US and UK based coaches that, that watch our channel, but make sure you have insurance to be able to run the camp in the event, right, anything bad happens right a player rolls over breaks his ankle or any anything touch wood won't happen but make sure you are protect, protected and also if you have to go inside or or hire out an indoor facility okay make sure that you have insurance because a lot of the venues and facilities that have indoor space will ask you to have business insurance okay that and that is to protect them in case your clients or you break anything inside the facility and then right it stops the the facility owner having to cover those costs for the breakage okay now the next one is structure okay so i'm just going to give you a really simple breakdown so i've Typically, the coaches who I have been working with or I've spoken to, they typically run in their camps from December the 20th to December the 23rd, right? So that's that's about a three-day camp, okay, which is good because after that, right, we get into New uh, Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day. And normally, right, a lot of families are away for the holidays, okay? But the run-up to the holiday, there's a lot of kids don't have much to do uh, their club team training has probably stopped so these three days are a really good way for you to run a successful camp and and help those players to get those extra touches and extra re um, repetition that they won't be getting for the for the next couple of weeks during the during the winter season right over the holidays Okay. Now the next one is 12 player max. Okay. So I'm basing this camp on a maximum of 12 players. Okay. Uh, the next one is just a breakdown, right? So it's a 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. camp. So I'm breaking the camp down into a.m. and p.m. Right. The a.m. you can focus your sessions more on ball mastery. Okay. Skill development, reps, which is important, obviously, during the winter. Now, you might want to do it a completely different way. But for me personally, when I run camps, what I like to do is I like to make sure that I prep before and I have every single day planned out that I'm got what I'm going to do. OK, so if I know I've got 12 players, if I know I'm running the camp nine to three and I know that, right, I'm going to be breaking the, the day during am and pm then i want to know right am we're going to be focusing on ball mastery making sure it's all technical skill based a lot of 1v1s a lot of 2v2s a lot of uh, repetition lots of touches okay and then in between that so in between 9 to 12 pm i like to run a snack break Right, that just gives players an opportunity to refuel, get get some more energy in, okay? Because it is a long day, and depending on how intense your camp is, right, players are going to need consistent uh, water and snack breaks, okay? So I like to just give a nice fifteen to thirty minute uh, 
snack break in between the AM session. Okay, then in the PM, right, we have a lunch break, which could be again anywhere between 30 to, to a, an hour. Right. I like to when I run these camps, I like to have a maximum of about 45, sometimes 45 to 50 minutes of a snack break. Right. And that's because when I do camps, I like the camps to be very intense. So that hour break just gives them gives the players on the camp an opportunity just to kind of switch off, relax and get ready for the afternoon, which is going to be a bit lighter uh, in the afternoon right now if you scroll further down okay if you look down then what i've done is i've added a couple of things that you can run in the pm right a 2v2 tournament you could do right that is really fun depending on how many players you have you could even do a 5v5 a 3v3 i've done a 2v2 based on the amount of players that that we have right so if you run if you've got 12 players and you do a 2v2, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's essentially six teams you could have, right? And you could do like a round robin, right? Where they all play each other, winner gets three points, uh, and you could do a table. And then the first two go and play a final. Uh, and then you could even do prizes for the winners of that tournament, etc. right? So... Again, if you look further down, challenges, challenges could be another thing I like to do is something I call soccer Olympics. So anything kind of related to the Olympics, but with a football. OK, so a lot of relays, uh, team building exercises. So it, fun challenges that doesn't that isn't so intense, but it still gets that repetition and it gets them to, to develop a certain skill or aspect of the game, but in a more relaxed kind of way that they can start to switch off um, and kind of relax. Okay, Because what I like to do is I like to make sure that the, the morning session is intense, repetitive, okay, and then the afternoon after they've had lunch, Right. It's more of a, a like games based focused a session where it is intense as well, but it's a little bit more relaxed in the morning. OK. And then the last one, something that can add a lot of value to your camp is running a goal setting workshop. OK, so you're coming to the end of the in, end of the year with your with your clients. And now they're going to be preparing for the new year. So what what other great way, what a great way to start the, the year by having a goal setting workshop, right? So you can have all your players, okay, they can bring a notebook, right? You can do this outside, you can do it inside, you can do it underneath a, a roof, wherever, okay? Because if you're running it out of a park, sometimes parks have benches, that you can get all your players to sit down and we do the workshop on the uh, the park benches. If you have indoor space, you can run this indoor as well. Okay, but I've done these before. Okay, and they are fantastic, right? Great way to end the year and start the year as well with your players, right? So a goal setting workshop. Now, another way you can add a lot more value as well is bringing a guest. Okay, so bringing a guest for that one hour to run the workshop. Okay, now this could be a professional coach. It could be a pro player, or it could be someone that has experience in the, the game and that can provide a lot of value to the players that you work with, okay? And that's essentially what you want to do. You want to add a lot of value so that this camp is not just any old winter soccer camp, but it's something that players and parents want to do because it's going to add a lot more, a lot of value to them, especially during a time of the year where a lot of people start to switch off and relax. Okay. And your camp can provide them with the, that, that extra repetition that they need for that, that holiday season. Okay. So, 
if you have any questions for me, make sure you reach out, right? Something that I haven't added to this, and this is, and there's a reason why I haven't added it, added it in is price, right? I know I'm going to get a lot of questions from coaches who say to me, Leo, what should I charge for these type of camps? Right now, it's very difficult to put a price on it because of a number of things, right? What value do you add? Uh, what costs are there in order to run the camp, right? Do you have staff costs as well? Uh, how much time and effort and energy are you putting into running this camp? If it's by yourself, remember that there's a lot more work that goes into it instead of just running the camp. Okay, you're planning, you're prepping, you know, you're you're marketing, you're selling. Right? You're doing a lot of extra work away from the field to make sure that this camp is a success, right? So when you price things, make sure you take those things into account and you don't just base the price of what the players are going to be doing on the, when they're with you, right? If, you, if it's just you, time, effort, and energy needs to be included into your pricing as well, okay? And to cut a little bit of cost as well, with the snack and lunch break, you can get players to bring their own snacks and lunches. Okay, I always do that with the camps I run. And that's just because there's a lot of players with different allergies that you might come across. And it just saves you that, 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 that hassle, that time, that energy, that effort in order to, to prep meals where parents can just bring something themselves and they know what their child can and cannot eat. Okay. Now, something else, again, that, that falls in line with the, the lunch and, and, and snack break, and that falls in line with the online registration is a waiver form. Okay. Now, the waiver form should be sent to parents once they have registered onto the camp. Okay. So if we go back to our first point over here, where it says, online registration page, once they've registered onto the camp, right, those parents must complete a waiver form with your terms and conditions before, right, they attend the camp, right? So before they actually physically attend your camp on the first day, that waiver form should be either sent or given and handed to you before the before their child even kicks or touches a, a soccer ball on your camp, right? And that way on that waiver form it has all your terms and conditions. It has uh, the terms that the, the parent agrees to the risks involved in these types of camps that you might their child might sustain injuries, that your business is not uh, liable for those injuries, etc. Right. So that's something that I wanted to add as well, because that will cover you as a business owner when you run your camps, okay? And the way I normally do it is once they've registered online, then we send them over the, the waiver form, make sure that is filled out, sent back, and then they're all good to go on the day, okay? So again, if you need more help with this, make sure you reach out to me, be more than happy to jump on it on a 10 to 15 minute call, see where you're currently at with your camps, and see what you're looking to do in order to grow and scale them okay thank you for watching and make sure you you subscribe to our channel